Now that we know the basics of cell structure, we're going to consider a little bit more about cell function. How do cells do the things that they do? In order for cells to function, they have to have access to resources. They need materials in order to, to do the different tasks of all the organelles. So this brings us to a consideration of just transport. How are things transported? It turns out that if we're talking about very small molecules that the cell needs, those small molecules can be transported um, by a couple of different ways. If they're very small molecules, they might be able to transport passively, which just means there's no energy required. So with passive transport, there are a couple of rules that govern how it happens. When molecules undergo passive transport, they kind of they spread out. They start from a location where they're more highly concentrated and they spread out to areas where they're less highly concentrated. This is called diffusion. Diffusion is the name for this process. This is movement from areas of high concentration to low concentration. So molecules do this for sure. For sure. Um, a good familiar example of diffusion would be if you have a bottle of perfume and you open the bottle of perfume. Okay, if you just give it a little bit of time, eventually, even all the way across the room, you're probably gonna start smelling the perfume eventually and that's because the perfume molecules start to diffuse they diffuse they spread out from where they were highly concentrated um, through the air to places where they're less highly concentrated so that's diffusion diffusion is going on all the time in living things in our own bodies a great example of diffusion would be oxygen so when you breathe air into your lungs what happens is oxygen from the air diffuses into your bloodstream and, it, and it's following that same rule going from a more highly concentrated place the air to a less highly concentrated place in your blood osmosis this is a special name, this is a special type of diffusion. Osmosis specifically is talking about diffusion of water molecules. And water is, is super prevalent, it's super um, relevant to living things. So sometimes it's helpful to have a special word just to refer to the diffusion of water. In the last module, we learned about the plasma membrane of cells, okay? and it turns out that water molecules are capable of diffusing across the plasma mem membrane. So we would say that osmosis occurs across the plasma membrane. There are special little pores that allow water molecules to move across the plasma membrane, and we'll be seeing a little bit more of this, um, particularly in the lab for this week. So for living things, uh, being able to control the water balance, this is something that's really critical. This is called osmoregulation. Um, so regulating osmosis is kind of what this word is implying. Regulating um, or controlling which direction water is flowing. And different types of cells have different preferences when it comes to osmoregulation. So some cells prefer to be um, in conditions where water naturally flows into the cell. A good example of that is plant cells. Plant cells like to bring in water and store it for use later. Uh, but animal cells aren't really like that. Animal cells like to um, be in what's called an isotonic environment, which just means water is kind of um, not being driven in either direction. Water goes equally in and out. So these words here, isotonic and hypotonic, these are some special words. They are both types of tonicity. So what is tonicity? There are a lot of new words on this slide. Tonicity is a way to describe how uh, two solutions compare to each other. So if we're trying to compare two different locations, maybe the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell, um, we could talk about the tonicity in the different places. And there are three different types of tonicity, three different words to learn, um, learn the meanings of in regards to tonicity. If a solution is hypertonic, what this means is that it has a high concentration of dissolved substances, in other words, solutes. Okay, so think of like water that has a lot of sugar dissolved in it. In that case, we would say that that water is hypertonic compared to other things, like if you had a, 
uh, second beaker with just pure water. Okay, so the two beakers, one has a bunch of sugar dissolved, the other doesn't have any sugar dissolved. Okay, the one with sugar, we would say that it's hypertonic. It has a lot of stuff dissolved in it. I also like to use the sugar example just because it kind of makes it easier to remember this. Something is hyper if it has a lot of sugar. Okay, so hopefully that'll help. Um, hypotonic is just the opposite of that. Hypotonic is referring to the solution that has a lower concentration of solute. So again, if we're comparing two beakers, one has sugar dissolved in it, the other has just pure water, the hypotonic solution would be the pure water, okay? Because there's it's lower in sugar content than the other solution. Finally, the last one, Last word here, isotonic. This is referring to um, two solutions that have the same concentration. So how does this all tie back in with uh, osmosis, with the movement of water? Well, it turns out if you have two solutions, let's go back to our original example, okay, so sugary water and plain water. If you have those two solutions and you put them in contact with each other, maybe there's just a very thin membrane uh, between them and water is able to cross that membrane, Okay, it turns out that water will always flow into the hypertonic solution. All, um, always, water is going to want to go to where there's a lot of dissolved sugar or salt or whatever we're talking about. Okay, so these words, these kind of help us to make predictions about which direction water is going to flow in this process of osmosis. So we'll be practicing with this um, in the lab that you're working through this week. These words are going to come up there. We're going to be thinking about these words in the context of cells. Um, so we'll think, we'll think about animal cells and we'll think about plant cells. In the case of animal cells, remember they don't have a cell wall. They just have a kind of a delicate plasma membrane. Okay, so if you imagine, imagine a bunch of water flowing into an animal cell, what's going to happen? That cell is going to get larger and larger and it might actually pop. And that would be a really bad thing. Okay, so this is why for animal cells, animal cells prefer isotonic environments. They don't want to be hypertonic. That would mean that water flows into them and, and causes them to pop. So that would be bad. Um, plant cells, on the other hand, they have a cell wall. So it's okay if water flows into the cell across the plasma membrane. They've got that cell wall that, that gives a limit on how large they can expand to. So that prevents the cell from bursting. Okay, so all of this, we've been talking about this in the context of passive transport, meaning these molecules just kind of do this automatically. There's no special energy input required. Um, diffusion happens just as a result of random vibrations that molecules are always undergoing. They kind of bounce into each other and they tend to spread apart from each other as a result of that push each other um, away, they spread out. So that's diffusion, that's passive transport. 